Okay, the last thing we were learning yesterday was if somebody has a big pot to kasher and they don't have a bigger pot that you could put the whole pot into at one time. So we ended off by saying you're allowed to immerse it, I mean, kasher it, not like immersing a keli in a mikvah, tefillah's kalim, the whole keli has, you can't do half a keli at a time. The whole keli has to be, the whole vessel has to be in the mikvah at one time. Unlike that, you're allowed to kasher when need be, you know it says in halacha it's better not to, but halachically you're allowed to kasher half of the time. So let's say this is the thing you need to kasher, and you don't have a pot big enough to put the whole thing into, you could put it in half at a time, okay? And then you take it out, and like the minute is you rinse it under cold water, and then you put the second half in and kasher it that way. It does say in halacha though, you should try to be careful, you have to make sure everything is covered, but you shouldn't, they like, put in three quarters and three quarters. Shkhanach says you shouldn't do it because then, because it already spit out, it might go back in. But again, it doesn't really matter today because today we don't kasha kalim unless if they weren't used for 24 hours. And if they weren't used for 24 hours, it's a blemish taste. So it's not that bad even if it does go in. Now what happens if you have a keli that's so big, you could put in a third at a time and then the other third but you're missing a third, huh? I can't put the middle. Yeah, you can't get the middle in there. If that doesn't go in, Pasha, it's too big to get in there. So then what you need to do, obviously, is that part that you didn't kasher with Hagala, you need to do Libun Kal. And now we're going to discuss a little bit about Libun Kal, and then we'll get to other forms of kashering, and then Mitzvah Shem will start going through the kitchen uh, based on everything we learned, how you cash your various utensils in the kitchen. Libun kal, okay, leave, so we learned like this. Hagala is the purging process of boiling hot water. Libun gomor is when you needed to make it red hot because it became traved directly or chomet stick directly with fire. So the only way you can get it out is by burning it out that it becomes red hot. But then you also have an in-between level. Not in-between, but it's called libun kal. Libun Kal is a very interesting concept. Libun Kal is, you get it hot, but you don't need to make it red hot. So how hot does Libun, lighter, how hot does Libun Kal need to be? So usually in Paskim it says that when you put a blowtorch on this side, let's say blowtorching it, it gets hot enough that if you take a straw, or nowadays a piece of paper, and put it on the other side, it will get burnt. I mean, it will turn black. That's very hot. Huh? It's hot, but it's not red hot. Okay. It's not red hot. But it's interesting, because in al and Shchonoruch, the, the guys bring us down already, it's not that... There are many places that al uses the Lushen to the Kash Nisraf, that the straw gets burnt. And a lot of times al says, just Yatse letters by then what's libun kal? Libun kal means it gets hot enough that if you touch it, you're going to burn your finger. So sometimes al Rebbe says by libun kal, the expression to kash nisraf, that means you actually burn a piece of paper or a straw, which is very flammable. Or, and sometimes al Rebbe says you do only yatsu letters be. So the answer, they base it on what the Rebbe Rashab explains in the kitchen of certain dinam of the Rebbe, that if there's a little bit of rust, then you need to be hot enough that the straw gets burnt. But if it's mamish clean, mamish clean, and you're just kashering for leaving kal, so then that, and then if it becomes yatsa letters, but it's enough. What about handles? Handles of a keli is like this. Handles of a keli, because usually they're outside, the assumption is they don't become as trafe as the inside. Now, Lepel, things do flow over. As we know, things go over. So handles have to be kashered also. Now, let's say you have plastic handles. And we just said before, the other day, that you don't kasher plastic for Pesach. So you don't kasher Kalim with plastic handles. Most people, huh? No, but even if you can unscrew it, a lot of handles are not welded on. You can actually unscrew them and you clean it off well, but the plastic, 
So some people are makele because it's outside the keli, not inside the keli. So even though it's plastic, they'll kasher it. Many people wouldn't kasher it at all because it has uh, plastic handles. But there's another... So li munkau basically is instead of agola. In other words, I'll give you an example. What happens if you have a big pot? Okay, and you want to kasher it. So really it needs hagala. It needs the purging process. But you don't have a keli that's too big. They're big enough to put it into. So what you really could do instead is do li munkau. To get it very hot. Now, how can you get it very hot? There's a few ways of doing it. Either you take the stove top and you turn the pot upside down over the, and you turn on the fire. After a while, it's going to be really very hot. Or you can put it on your stove top and burn it out, you know, turn on the fire with nothing in it. Or what you could do is Fill it up to the top. We discussed this the other day. Fill it up to the top with water. Bring it to a bubbling boil. Throw something hot, like a hot rock, into the <coughs> pot. And then it overflows, so then the whole outside is also kashut. Liban cannot... Gomur, I'll give you an example. In contemporary halacha, they write, if you want to blow torch your oven to make it Liban Kal, a Liban Gomur, I'm sorry, Liban Gomur, they write, they figure it out, seven minutes on each spot. So first of all, it warps the oven. You might sure you kill your oven, you might as well just buy a new one already, without going through the whole hassle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, you kill it. But therefore, if they write in the books, they evaluate, they estimate it as like seven minutes on each spot. Obviously, the first spots are going to take longer than the second spots, because metal conducts heat, even though it's not metal necessarily. But it conducts heat, so it's not going to be... But it, it's a process. Therefore, we said yesterday, self-cleaning gets up to 900 degrees is Libun Gomur, according to most opinions. Now, there's another union of kashring. Let's say you want to... Let's say you have a stainless steel sink. Okay? And you want to kasher it for Pesach. So I'm not talking about the faucets now, I'm just talking about the sink. So you have a sink, you want to kasher the sink for Pesach. So, how is the normal process of kashering a sink for Pesach? You don't need a blowtorch to make it red hot, because it's always with liquids. So what do you need to do? You need to do a Hagala, right? How do you do a Hagala on a sink? So first of all, we said a very interesting thing, as today the dinner is, you have to wait 24 hours that it can be used for hot. Right? Now just remember, when you have people in your house with a sink, Inevitably, somebody's going to turn on the hot water. Somebody's going to pour down hot water down the sink. So I always tell in the classes, I tell, I tell what they should do is close the hot water underneath the sink. Close the hot water underneath the sink that nobody could turn on the hot water because it doesn't work. Plus, I tell them, inevitably, you have, I always use the example, men, kids, and the maids. They're the ones that make all the problems in the kitchen. Okay, so what happens, somebody's going to, by mistake, empty a hot coffee into the sink or whatever. So I tell them, if you're planning to kasha your sink with hagola, how do you make sure it wasn't used for hot for 24 hours? You close the hot water underneath the sink and you cover the sink. Put a board on top of it that people just should remember not to use the sink. Cold water is okay? Huh? Cold water. To what? To use in the sink instead of water. No, you can't. No, you have to leave it dry and you have to leave it uh, not used. <laughs> okay, now Yeah, but you have a dinner kavosh So then it's, it's anyway going to be If it's 24 hours soaked <laughs> in cold It's also like cooked So again, it's not the proper way of doing it What you need to do is make sure nothing You know, is in the sink Now Ideally <coughs> Ideally, how do you kashi with hagala? So he said You cook up a pot With hot water and then you put the thing in that you're kashering, correct? The cutlery, the becher, whatever it may be. So if you really want to kasher the sink with agola, the proper way of doing it would be, if you think about it, putting the sink into boiling hot water. Correct? Just like you put, just like you put your cutlery into the boiling hot water. So how would you have to kasher a sink? Technically, you would really have to put the sink into boiling hot water, which is obviously not real, not realistic. So therefore, like this, sometimes eerie is enough. Remember, we learned 
that the way it becomes treif is the way it becomes kosher. Most of the time in the sink, the sink becomes treif, not with hot cooked water in it, but poured water into the sink. So there's a din in Aloha that's called reif tashmishe. You go by the most usage. So according to many opinions, just pouring boiling hot water all over the sink is good enough because that's the way it became treif. You didn't cook water in the sink. So basically, how did the sink become chomet stick? But with poured hot water. So many opinions hold that you really can kasher it just by pouring hot water all over it. The Altreb is more machmed, and in our circles we try to be more machmed. So what do we do? We do what's called Evan Malubin. Evan Malubin means a heated rock, not a pebble. So basically, to give you an example, what you would do is, you take a brick, or something thick, like that, you would heat it on the stove until it gets red hot. Okay? Then, when you're pouring the boiling hot water all over the sink, or over the counters that are kasherable, that we'll get to not today, the, sink, the counters that are kasher, material that's kasherable, so what you do is, you pour the water, and when you put the water, you go put the hot rock, you move with tongues, obviously, you move the hot rock around, when you're pouring the water, you move the hot rock around the water. What does that do? Around the sink, but where you're pouring the water, you move the hot rock around it. What does that do? So Allah says that rock, because it's boiling, it's red hot, heats up the water that you're pouring as if it would be inside the keli. So basically, by the way, you have it's interesting in the hotels, you have these commercial kitchen, commercial sinks, which are most of them stainless, but they have a very interesting thing. You know those things you plug in. They don't use them so much anymore today. When you want it, when you're traveling, element. there'll be a car, the heat heating element. Those coils, you plug it yeah, in and then you put it in the immersing heating element. How would they cook up water? There's this thing, round thing with coils. You plug it in, then it's made to stick into the water and it cooks up the water. Mamish cooks it. So in the hotels, they have commercial ones. I once saw it, it was unbelievable. What they do, if you want to cash your hotels, like to do Pesach when they go to, the, you know, all those hotels, they actually fill up the sink to the top with water. And then there's a massive element, it's like this big. So it's, it's plugged in, and it heats up, and it boils the water in the sink. It's mamish cooking a pot. And that's the best, because then you're mamish cooking the water in a clearition which is not a problem. So that's the best way of doing it. So many poskim hold iri klidishin is enough because reif tashmishin, most of the usage is not with direct water from the, in the pot, but water poured from the pot. Uh, other people machmer, especially Pesach, especially Pesach, we learned you're more machmer. So then they would kasher it with Evan Malubin, and then, again, it's fine.